19. Do you think the increase in minimum support prices MSP for farmers and waiving off their loans will solve the problem of agriculture distress? What other steps would you suggest in this regard? Hint. Indian farmers are facing a crisis situation which is reflected in the increasing number of suicides, protests by the farming community for remunerative prices and reservation in jobs. Though government have MSP policy to safeguard the interest of the farmers and sometimes even waive of the loans, however, both of them are unsustainable in long term as the need of the hour is boosting food processing sector with well-managed supply chains, which directly links farms to market and assure remunerative prices for farmers. Why increase in MSP and waiving of the loans is not the solution. MSP minimum support price as a policy instrument of balancing the needs of the producers and consumers was started in 1960s, during Green Revolution period when government performed the task of distributor of food. However, in modern times when government is moving away from the universal procurement and distribution function increase in MSP cannot be implemented on ground as only government is bound by MSP and not the private sector. If government increases MSP and private players don't buy then it will increase the financial burden of government, which will impact the capital expenditure of the government. It also has the potential of distorting the food supply market and may violate the WEO subsidy norms if procurement is more than those needed for food security. This will go against the policy which India has been trying to follow post-1991 reforms. As shown, the Kumar Committee has said that there is insufficient storage capacity with FCI Food Corporation of India. Increased level of government procurement will create problems of storing of these food grains and leading to wastages. Frequent loan waivers also are a problem in itself as they create moral hazard for farmers and incentivizes them not to pay in future. These steps also dissuade banks not to distribute loans to the farming community as there are always chances of them being waived and if the farmers are not paying loans the working capital of the banks erode. It also is a burden on the state governments as they have to cut their expenditure of certain important items like health, education, women or road building, etc., which negatively impact the growth in long term. This was evident in case of loan waiver by the UP government. Both of these steps do not take care of all the farming community of India. Tenant farmers, women farmers, Agriculture laborers are neglected in all these policies. Regional imbalances in government procurement on MSP is self-evident. GS score. Three zero hints. Indian geography. Both of these are populist in nature and dissuade policy planners to shy away from the long-term measures which are essential for the agriculture sector. Some of these long-term steps can be like increased focus on food processing sector which will help in commercialization of agriculture sector. This will bring greater investment in supply chain management, reduce post-harvest losses and can help in establishing direct links between industries and farmers providing greater income to farmers. Smoothing the marketing facility through greater investments in sorting, grading and storage facilities at the agriculture produce market and amending the APMC app to suit the new times. Facilitating all in via sale through in home, avoiding distress sale through negotiable warehouse receipt, providing insurance facility, Assured and timely climate advisories, building rural roads, etc. Helping farmers to diversify to horticulture crops, having stable policies for agriculture trade. Liberalizing land leasing, contract farming, reducing cost of farming through affordable mechanization, efficient irrigation, etc. Government has a host of programs like Rashtriya Krishi Vikas Yojana, Inham, PM Grand Sadak Yojana, Gravadya Southeast Bretopeo which focus on holistic development of agriculture sector. However, there is a need to focus on their efficient implementation if farming crisis is to be solved. Associated Concepts Recent government scheme for agriculture. Government has approved the continuation of Rashtriya Krishi Vikas Yojana or KBE as Rashtriya Krishi Vikas Yojana. Remunerative approaches for agriculture and allied sector rejuvenation are KBR AFTA. They are for three years, i.e., 2017 to 18 to 2019 to 20. Are KBR AFTA. They are funds would be provided to the states as 60 minutes and 40 seconds grants between center and states, 90 minutes and 10 seconds for northeastern states and Himalayan states through the following streams. A regular are KBR AFTA. They are infrastructure and assets and production growth with 70% of annual outlay to be allocated to states as grants based for the
following activities infrastructure and assets with 50% of regular RKBR AFEAA are outlaid. Value addition linked production projects with 30% of regular RKBR AFEAA are outlaid. Flexi funds with 20% of regular RKBR AFEAA are outlaid. States can use this for supporting any projects as per the local needs. The RKBR AFEAA are special sub schemes of national priorities. 20% of annual outlay and see innovation and agro entrepreneur development through creating end to end solution, skill development and financial support for setting up the agro enterprise negative 10% of annual outlay including 2% of administrative costs. The scheme will incentivize states in enhancing more allocation to agriculture and allied sectors. This will also strengthen farmers efforts through creation of agriculture infrastructure that help in supply of quality inputs market facilities, etc. This will further promote agro-entrepreneurship and support business model that maximize returns to farmers. GS score. Hints, Indian Geography 31. 20. Whereas the adult sex ratio is 943 in India, the child sex ratio is a meter 919. What are the reasons behind this difference? Discuss the socio-economic impact of skewed sex ratio. Hints. The 2011 census data showed a significant declining trend in the child sex ratio. Child sex ratio is calculated as number of girls for every 1,000 boys between age group of 0 to 6 years. It is at an all-time low of 918 in 2011 from 976 in 1961. The decline in CSR has been unabated since 1961. The sex ratio showed a mixed trend from 1961, unlike the CSR that has declined unabated since 1961. This decline in the CSR has been wide-ranging and in all communities and regions. Wide difference between the sex ratio and CSR. CSR has rapidly declined in the last three decades. Some of the reasons for neglect of girl-child and low-child sex ratio are Sex selective abortion have been greatly facilitated by the misuse of diagnostic procedures such as amniocentesis that can determine the sex of the fetus. Son preference and the belief that it is only the son who can't perform the last rites, that lineage and inheritance run through the male line, sons will look after parents in old age, men are the breadwinners, etc. Exorbitant dowry demand is another reason for female feticide slash infanticide. Small family norm coupled with easy availability of sex determination tests may be a catalyst in the declining child sex ratio. The social prejudice against the girl child continues to be an issue of concern for India, where a daughter is considered a liability, her birth a burden. Policy and law, laxity in implementation of constitutional entitlements and rights to girl child and poor application of statutory laws like PCT and ETI Act. Higher death rate among girls in the one month to one year age group especially from gastrointestinal disease, pneumonia, and miscellaneous causes. Socio-economic impact of skewed sex ratio. A high sex ratio can have many implications, including, for example, on crime. Jeanrit and Rita Gutra, in a study, have concluded that murder rates in India are correlated with the female-male ratio. Districts with higher proportion of females actually have lower murder rates. Marriage squeeze. In parts of China and India, there will be a 12 to 15 percent excess of young men. These men will remain single and will be unable to have families. In societies where marriage is regarded as virtually universal and social status and acceptance depend, in large part, on being married and creating a new family. There is much anecdotal evidence regarding increases in trafficking of women, both for the sex industry and marriage, in both India and China. Shortage of brides leads to crimes like trafficking, abuse, physical violence against women. Female feticide by killing the baby inside the womb, more popularly known as abortion due to the neglect of and discriminatory behavior against girls. Societies with adverse sex ratio have the presence of customs like polyandry, abduction and purchase of women. GS score. 3 to hints. Indian geography. Vicious cycle. Desire to have a male child would force the women to have reparative pregnancy. This will not only affect her health but the economic condition of the family will suffer. Economic participation, skewed sex ratio hinders the economic participation of women in the society. Less number of women will create unequal opportunities between women and men, 
which will hamper women's ability to lift themselves from poverty and improve their lives. This affects economic growth of the nation as women forms a major part in labor force. But it back AO, but it back AO BBBP scheme, a success story, an increasing trend in sex ratio at birth SRB is visible in 104 districts. 119 districts have reported progress in registration of pregnancies in the first trimester and 146 districts have shown improvement in institutional deliveries. Here, Emma, which has the worst child sex ratio according to the 2011 census, 834 girls for every 1,000 boys against the national average of 918 has shown improvement in sex ratio at birth in 18 of the total 20 districts selected in the state for the program. Programs such as Jaini Sirup Shyogjana and Indragandhi Maitreya Sakhai Hogyogjana should replicate it all over India at the earliest way forward. There are both long-term and short-term measures to stem the declining female ratio. In the long term, ensuring equal entitlement such as property rights, equal access to nutrition, health, education, and affection, and addressing the overall question of dowry and the necessity of marriage. In the short term, incentives to educate girls, financial support for girls, educating healthcare professionals and stopping incentives for sterilization are suggested. As India in 2017 slipped 21 places in global gender ranking, there is an urgent need to address the issue at the earliest associated concepts. Government efforts to tackle adverse sex ratio. Government is running several schemes like Bidibakao Bidibakao BBBP scheme. Government of India has introduced the Bidibakao Bidibakao BBBP scheme for survival, protection and education of the girl child. It aims to address the issue of declining child sex ratio CSR through a mass campaign across the country targeted at changing societal mindsets and creating awareness about the criticality of the issue. The scheme will have focused intervention and multi-sectoral action in 100 districts with low child sex ratio. In Dira Gandhi Matrava the Government of India in the Ministry of Women and Child Development is implementing the centrally sponsored scheme namely, in Dira Gandhi, GS score. Hint, Indian Geography 33. Matrivas Hai Yogyana IGMC Conditional Maternity Benefit CMP for pregnant and lactating women to improve their health and nutrition status to better enabling environment by providing cash incentives to pregnant and nursing mothers. Increased focus on safety of women through criminal law amendments of 2013. Mahila Police Volunteer Scheme, POC SO at Financial empowerment of families through Sukhya Samriti Yojana and women through SHG underscore bank linkages program.